It is another unbearably warm morning here today <laughs> in this city state. They have some really cool architecture here, including this circular round building right in the water there that um, is kind of translucent or transparent. You can see into it. But then I found out it's actually just an Apple store. <laughs> This is my fifth time visiting this city in the last seven years. So I thought I'd just share my thoughts about what I think about Singapore and also why I would never, ever, ever choose to live here. I'll give it this though, that skyline is amazing. Especially at night when they light up these buildings. Singapore After Dark is spectacular especially around the Marina Bay when they have their nightly show with illuminated water choreographed to music. Gazing up at the super trees, twinkling lights will make you feel like you're on another planet. And there are lots of other neighborhoods that dress up after the sun sets. But that's a story for another time. Oh, that breeze feels real nice. Uh, if you look over that way too, you can actually see the Merlion statue, which is something that everyone comes over here to do. Okay, let me really quickly explain to you exactly why I made that comment earlier saying that I could never live here. Because I do think there are a lot of really, really great things about Singapore and reasons to be here. But I'll just get these negatives out of the way because I'm really not much of a negative person anyway. So number one is the heat. And I am definitely a cold weather person. I don't like anything above like 85 degrees Fahrenheit is too much for me. <laughs> and I'm just sweating all day and I don't enjoy that. Although to counter that, most people don't go out in the heat here anyway because they've got lots of indoor malls and indoor gyms and places where you can do things indoors. And again, with the heat, they don't actually have four seasons and I need my seasons. They've only really just got one. It's just summer, summer, summer and a hotter summer. <laughs> now there's really just one more reason why I couldn't live here ever, and that is the expense, the cost of living. This city is one of the most expensive in the entire world. And I've always said that if you have enough money, you can pretty much be happy anywhere. The problem is I couldn't be happy in Singapore because I'm poor. <laughs> but those are the two reasons, the heat and the expense of it all. Now let me just start talking about all the fantastic things now because this city has a lot to offer, especially for people just coming here to visit or to work. All right, let's start with a big one for most people. Not for me, of course, but shopping. Singapore is known as a shopper's paradise. I'm just in one of the many, many malls here. And this isn't even the fancy mall street. For that, you go over to Orchard Road and you'll find so many buildings with so many different brand stores, lots of luxury goods. Again, stuff way outside my price range. But the nice thing is they make great places, again, just to look around, you know, window shop, grab a coffee, meet your friends indoors. And it's cool. So when you need to get out of that heat that's outdoors constantly, you come into one of these big, malls and they have so many things going on here. This one even has a small canal inside where you can get on a boat. All right, just for you guys, I'm going to venture outside one more time today, brave that tropical heat, and I'm going to show you another reason why I really love Singapore. When I'm walking through here, I feel like this is where a celebrity would stay. You know, if you're someone rich and famous or just an actor or actress or heck, just even an influencer, someone online that makes funny videos or does travel content, kind of like me, except famous and funny. <laughs> so now I'm just using a quick walk through this amazing hotel here. It really is pretty insane. And I'm just headed toward the super trees, which everybody knows about, I think. 
And this brings me to something else I think Singapore does really well, and another reason I love it here, and that is the architecture, the design, and kind of some of these really cool buildings and structures and gardens. And here you can see these super trees. I'm actually still probably like a 10 minute walk away, but there's a nice viewing point here. Some really interesting rocks and little Asian inspired garden. Right now I'm just here in the gardens by the bay. And this is where you can find these really tall artificial trees. And you can also find two indoor gardens that are really fantastic and incredible. They are kind of pricey to go in and see though. But if you're here and you have the time and money, definitely check that out. Just be aware there'll be a lot of other people here with you because this is one of the most popular tourist attractions in the city. There is also a lot of wildlife here in the city itself. So you're gonna see a lot of animals you may even see birds, monkeys, and otters. Who could forget about the otters? The otters are so famous here. And you can see the massive scale of all of these here. I feel like a tiny person. <laughs> Really, you need to come back here at night because they light these up and they even have a light show. And that's really when this area is cool to look at. Although you can come here during the day as well. It's free just to walk around, it doesn't cost anything. It really only costs money when you decide to go up to the top and walk along that bridge up there. And while you're here, just walk up another few minutes over that way and you can get over to those two indoor gardens I was talking about earlier. Surroundings. If you become My a only victim, criticism would be at times the connections between the stations are quite far, so you feel like you're walking for five or ten minutes just to get to the other line. And that can be a lot when you're really tired from being outside all day. <laughs> Actually, it can get kind of eerie sometimes in these massive stations because you won't see anybody else around you for a while, and some of these escalators are quite tall. My final thoughts here on the subway system in Singapore is that it looks amazing. It's very modern, clean. The thing is, I haven't seen a lot of people use it. And I know Singapore is one of the most expensive cities in the world, if not the most expensive. And I'm just wondering, maybe everyone just Ubers or grabs it around, takes taxis everywhere. Because it is really hot outside, but nobody seems to be using the train. At least but not while I'm here. I could be wrong about all this, but yeah, I don't know. Is Chinatown super kitschy and touristy trying to sell you all kinds of trinkets? Yes, but it's also such a famous part of this city and the fact that the majority of people living here are Chinese. I feel like you have to come over and check it out at least once while you're visiting. And it's not that big of an area. It's a few square city blocks. So my number one reason for loving Singapore and wanting to come here is the food and it is fantastic. The cuisine here is just amazing. You can get stuff from all over the world. Pretty much anything you can think of, you can grab here. Now this neighborhood can be really kitschy and touristy. A lot of people do come over here. A lot of stuff being sold, especially like Chinese trinkets. But there's also some really great food courts, also known here in Singapore as hawker centers. And these are all over, but there are two or three right around Chinatown here that are easy to get to and have some great stalls with different kinds of food. One of my favorites being the Hainese chicken. There's also chili crab, which is super famous here as well. It's 
so many people selling clothes in here. We are going to get off this first floor though and go upstairs to grab some food. And this is where all the restaurants begin. And there are a lot of them. The real beauty of these places is that they have so many different kinds of food you can try just in one spot. And also some of these are actually Michelin star and Michelin rated, so they're really good quality food. Plus, it's really dirt cheap. So you can't really go wrong when you come to one of these hawker centers. They can just get kind of crowded, especially during lunchtime. Oh, great, thank you. Oh, and don't forget to bus your own table. They have racks over here for you to put your food once you're finished. Nothing like a coffee in the afternoon to keep you going. And it doesn't hurt that this place has a Michelin star, so you know it's going to be good. Far better than that green mermaid. That is a really nice fountain. <laughs> I finally got away from the hustle and bustle of those downtown touristy spots I've been kind of going to this morning just to check them out before I leave this trip. I'll probably be back to Singapore again. It seems like a place where businesses are thriving and they keep asking me to come every year. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me today here in this city as I went over it with a very broad stroked brush, kind of painted a picture of what it's like, but mostly through the lens of tourists that come here and people that just visit like me. I think there's a lot of really fun stuff to do here, especially when you talk about like the super trees, especially when they're lit up at night, when you talk about the gardens by the bay, which are a lot of fun inside those big glass domes. Uh, there are ethnic neighborhoods. Chinatown is my favorite because I also happen to live in China before coming to Singapore. And I think the city itself, when you talk about global cities or international cities, Singapore is one that I truly feel like has that because of their, uh, all these different cultures living here, whether they're from China or India or other parts of Southeast Asia, they're kind of all melding together here. You should definitely come and visit Singapore if you have a chance or you're on a work trip like me and they send you because you will find something you love here. You will find something to enjoy, whether it's the green spaces, whether it's the restaurants and the food. You'll like something, trust me. <laughs> anyway, I do hope this video was useful and helpful and gave you some ideas about your trip here or maybe reminded you of things that you love about this place. Stay safe, healthy, and happy, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Thanks for joining me today. Life's a journey meant to be shared. Remember to always travel with an open heart and an open mind. Enjoy the ride and keep your eyes on the horizon for the next adventure. I'll see you out there.